All right, listen up. Private Martin, you're on the obstacle course and doing weapons training today. Before starting the obstacle course, read each of these important signs and do what they tell you. Good. Now check your objectives. You'll notice that your current objective is highlighted. In addition, the location of your current objective is marked by the star on your compass. That's it. Close enough. You will notice that objective is checked off and you now have a new one. All right, Martin. Open the gate and run the obstacle course. Go, go, go! Martin, good to see you. Move it, ladies! This is they not your, your Aunt Fanny's dance! Too, huh? Jump over him! Come on, Elder, get the lead out! Not bad. Now hit the dirt and crawl forward under the barbed wire. Sergeant, fire up those machine guns! Those are barbed wire. Privates, let's go, let's go, let's go! Private Martin, proceed through that door. Sergeant Moody's gonna take you through weapons training. The rest of you ladies, stay right here. Eyes up, Private. I'm up here, in the observation tower. Grab one of those M1A1 carbines from the table. To get more ammo, grab it from any loose weapon of the same type you are carrying. Approach the fence and fire six rounds at your target. Your accuracy will be defined by the tightness of your crosshairs. Fire six more rounds at your target, in different stances and while moving. You will be more accurate while not moving, and in the crouching or prone positions. These skills could mean your life. When your magazine is empty, your weapon will reload automatically. All right, Private, move on to the next area. Grab up a Springfield rifle from the table, switching it for your carbine. Turn to the left, move to the fence, and fire two rounds at your target. at your target while aiming down your sight. All right, I hope it's clear to you that you will be more accurate while aiming down the sight. All right, Private, move on to the next area. Exchange your Springfield for one of the Thompson submachine guns on the table. Unless you've got three hands, you can only carry two weapons besides your sidearm and grenades. Fire ten rounds at your target, first from the hip, then aiming down the gun sight. Compare your accuracy. Get used to firing both ways. You will notice a slight zoom effect when you raise and aim down the sight of a weapon without a scope. Take a few steps while aiming down your sight. You're gonna move slower this way. In close quarters combat, you can hit your enemy with the butt end of your weapon. This is called a melee attack. Try it with your Thompson. Don't screw around, kid. This is for real. Now switch weapons, Private. Unless you're as dumb as you are ugly, it may dawn on you that each weapon is good for different situations. Make the wrong choice and you could buy the farm. Fire three more rounds at your target. To get more ammo, grab it from any loose weapon of the same type you are carrying. The number of rounds in your weapon and the rounds you are carrying are displayed in the lower right corner of your HUD. Keep tabs on it, soldier. Approach the fence and fire six rounds at your target. Your accuracy will be defined by the height of your 
Fire six more rounds at your target, in different stances and while moving. You will be more accurate while not moving, and in the crouching or prone positions. These skills could mean your life. All right, Private, move on to the next area. Grab up a Springfield rifle from the table, switching it for your carbine. Turn to the left, move to the fence, and fire two rounds at your target. Now fire two rounds at your target while aiming down your sight. Alright, I hope it's clear to you that you will be more accurate while aiming down the sight. Alright, Private, move on to the next area. Exchange your Springfield for one of the Thompson submachine guns on the table. Unless you've got three hands, you can only carry two weapons, besides your sidearm and grenades. Fire ten rounds at your target. First to the hip, then aiming down the gun sight. Compare your accuracy. Get used to firing both ways. Take a few steps while aiming down your sight. You're going to move slower this way. In close quarters combat, you can hit your enemy with the butt end of your weapon. This is called a melee attack. Try it with your Thompson. Don't screw around, kid. This is for real. Now switch weapons, Private. Unless you're as dumb as you are ugly, it may dawn on you that each weapon is good for different situations. Make the wrong choice and you could buy the farm. Fire three more rounds at your target. Outstanding, Private. Proceed to the next area. Pick up the frag grenades from the table. Pick them up. Throw a grenade into each of the openings before you. Rock and fire! Move behind the concrete post and lean out to the left, then the right. This will help protect you from the enemy. Move on to the next area. Our last station will be explosives. Pick them up, partner. That's a lot of firepower there. Treat it with respect. That stuff doesn't care what it blows up. Place your explosives on the cinder block wall. Note that a stopwatch has appeared. This will tell you how much time you have to get your butt out of there unless you want it blown off. Fire in the hole! Good job, Private. Well done. Keep your weapons with you and clean at all times. You are dismissed. Baker Company, listen up. This is the big one. Operation Overlord. The air and seaborne invasion of Normandy. On H-hour D-Day, Seaborne Infantry will attack five beaches codenamed Utah, Omaha, Gold, Juno, and Sword here on the coast of Normandy. Utah and Omaha beaches will be attacked by three of our infantry divisions. At the same time, two British and one Canadian division will hit Gold, Juno, and Sword beaches. The Airborne will be landing six hours before H-hour, before the air and naval bombardments. The British 6th Airborne Division will be landing here. At the same time, the 101st and the 82nd Airborne will be landing in these areas. The Dews River Estuary here divides Utah and Omaha Beach. The mission of the 101st is to capture the Dews River crossings linking Utah and Omaha Beach and to protect the flanks of Utah Beach. This road here is the main highway that connects the entire Cotentin Peninsula. The Germans have troop concentrations in this region. When those troops are mobilized into a counterattack on the beaches, they'll have to move along this road.